I greet you in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. What a wonderful time we could meet together right now. Listen, church, and all those who are watching around the world, the Bible says when two or three of us get together, the Holy Spirit is right there. The Lord Jesus said, I am there right with you. Amen. That means now we are having church. The power of the Holy Spirit is going to come and encourage you as the Lord showed me through his scriptures what he will want to encourage his family, his church and his body. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that the power of the Holy Spirit will come upon them and encourage them. Bring your word alive in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to bring attention to Psalms 103, verse 1 to 5. The book of Psalms 103, verse 1 to 5. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits who forgives all my iniquity, who heals all my diseases, who redeems my life from the pit, who crowns me with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies me with goods, and so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need to say hallelujah. I tell you why. Because this is a psalms of thanksgiving and the confession of God's goodness. You know what? This confession this chapter must be in the mouth of every child of God I used to pray this until today for the last 35 years in every prayer in the day that I've raised our uh, we have raised our children up we pray over them and they know this scripture by heart as a rhyme after finishing prayer for the day we say bless the Lord O my soul and all that is within me Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. In the midst of all the challenges that we have been going through, the Holy Spirit has been placed this, rather I should say, placed this uh, like a song in my soul that forget not all his benefits. So I want to encourage you what this means. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. It is not just your spirit speaking and your mind is thinking something else it's not just like your mind is thinking but your body and systems everything is crying out no i will not be healed god is not true this is more worse than i thought god can do small things but not this god heals not everybody some are given to die so probably i'm the one don't think of the words think of the best because god has come to give you the best part of your story hallelujah hallelujah god has given the best part of himself to you God did not give someone else he gave the very only begotten son and he has your best in mind right now forget not all his benefits but before he says that all that is within me the word all that is within me appears nine times in this chapter alone if you read verse 1 2 3 you'll read 6 19 21 and 22 nine times it appears all that is within me. You know what it means? That if we, to, we are to see God's benefits coming upon your life, our whole being, a total commitment, an entire consecration is required to see what God is about to do in your life. And not only that, very interestingly, uh, especially in the book of Deuteronomy, you know Moses commanded the people not to forget what God has done for them. 14 times. He told them not to forget what God has done for them. And it, 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 the other thing is about not only they must remember before eating they pray, but after eating they must also pray that whatever they add, we thank God for. Imagine that. So that they will not say, I was satisfied by the work of my hands, but I was satisfied by the goodness and the mercies of God. And so that's so I want to encourage each one of us as we consider this scripture. There are seven breakthroughs in this scripture, seven blessings that God wants to give to his people that I want to encourage you right now. Seven things. Number one, the word benefits. 
You know, when you become a child of God, there are benefits of the kingdom that will come over your soul. It's not like I don't get anything. I'm just a Christian. I'm just a tradition. No, there are breakthroughs that is given to your life. Now, we're not going to go through everything. I've, I've just for this first broadcast, I've taken one part of this many blessings, but there are seven things. Number one, the word benefits. Number two, the word forgives all my iniquities. Number three, he heals all my diseases. Number four, he redeems my life from the pit. Number five, crowns me with love, steadfast love and mercy. Number six, satisfy me with good things. Number seven, renew the power of transformation. Look at that. Seven things. Benefits, forgives, healing, redemption, crown, satisfaction and renew. Seven things will come upon your life as you meditate upon Psalms 103. Hallelujah. Now, th the first five verses says seven things. But if you read the entire chapter, there are much more than what it is on the outside but i want to encourage you right now many are getting sick many are getting weak in their mind many are more afraid of COVID than god pardon me for saying that for some of us god is as though like kind of a seething us through you know whether there is faith that is balanced faith and whether there is authentic faith in our hearts or whether it is a theoretical faith or whether it's a faith that is not active so i want to encourage you during these times right now encourage your faith how do my faith come alive by me worshiping by me declaring by me standing on the word if you can pray pray if you can pray in tongues pray in tongues if you can worship god worship until your faith becomes alive spend time with the word until the word becomes alive inside your spirit man amen so i want to encourage you right now the bible says let's look at uh, uh, the first power for us we're going to take about the word healing in Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5, when Isaiah had the vision of God, he said that God will heal, this Messiah that will come, will heal by his stripes. So it was already prophesied. But who is the father? I, uh, Exodus 15, 26, God spoke to Moses to say, he is the God that healed thee. Amen. You see in the Old Testament, we're talking about the Old Testament. We're not even talking about the New Testament yet. It is a God who heals. And then here in the New Testament, the Bible says, by his stripes you are healed. Because why? It was no longer a prophecy. Now it is a fulfillment. Amen. No longer it was said before, but now Jesus, 2,000 years ago, fulfilled. And right till now, this moment, as you are listening to this broadcast, someone around the world is getting healed in Jesus name I want to encourage you why can't that be you the next one why can't that be you someone is always reporting healing just uh, uh, yesterday we did a broadcast to encourage the church right after the broadcast we started receiving texts message from different people who watch and say while before the message came, I was healed. Before the, as I was listening, I'm feeling the power of God. I'm getting healed. Amen. If one small broadcast can do this, how much more the power of God can do when His people will believe on His name and no other name. Crush COVID under your feet in Jesus' name. There are people who walk on their toes by the power of God. They have been healed by cancer. They spit at cancer and say, what is cancer? And COVID, man, it's nothing. No matter how contagious it is, I tell you what is contagious. The power of God is contagious. I tell you what is more influential, the power of God is. The moment there was a woman who come and touch Jesus, not only his body, his clothes, the contact point, the moment was touched, boom, the power of God came. Imagine how contagious, how the power of God is like an energy waiting to be released from the body of Jesus. And the same power 
is waiting to be released in your home right now, upon your children, upon your husband, upon your wife, whether you can pray, whether you can't pray, whether you believe or you don't believe, Jesus has paid the price for you. Hallelujah. Jesus has took the Christ for you. Amen. He has taken the cross. He has taken all the diseases and scientists have said, there are 39 major root diseases that every other disease that you can think in this world, you put them into categories. There are 39 major categories. And you know what the Bible says? That Jesus took 39 stripes. So out of every major root disease, it has been cut and chopped and pulled out of its roots. And you say in the name of Jesus, Amen. Don't, side, don't stand on the side of those who are dying. Don't stand on those who are not believing. Stand on those side where you need the healing power of God. Your time is not finished yet. You're not going to give your best time of your body to some disease and get sick. It's time to believe in Jesus' name. The Bible says, let us pray for one another, encourage one another, strengthen those who are weak. My brothers, my sisters, I've been there before. I've been sick before, I've been healed before, I've experienced God. Some healing came instant, some healing came as I walked through the journey, some healing came in difficult circumstances. Sometimes I wonder why God allowed. I've been in the mission field, sick in the stomach, stick like a dog, you name it. But God always has shown His favor and His grace upon me. You know why? The more I was praying, the favor of God was coming. I did not give up on Jesus and I know you will not too. Amen. Let's look at the scripture today where the Bible says there are seven things that we talked about, seven benefits. And all these seven benefits can be seen in the New Testament as well. So we realize now that Paul took the Old Testament theology of who God is and presented it in the New Testament through the accomplished work of Jesus Christ. The extension of what God the Father in the Old Testament, Jesus brought about in the New Testament and the Holy Spirit is fulfilling right till now, till Jesus is coming back. And all of the works of the triune God will continue even in the millennium. Amen. Even in heaven, the Bible says there is no sickness, there is no death anymore. The same divine health and healing is available for you and I as we meditate on the scriptures in Jesus' name. Look at this. Number one, you are forgiven. The Bible says, 1 John 1, 9, that God forgives all of our sins and iniquities. And number two, the Bible says God heals. You know, we read that in the scripture, even in James chapter 5, verse 16, therefore confess your sins uh, to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Can you, hello? Pray for one another that you may be healed. If you pray, you will be healed. If you pray for one another, you'll be healed by one another. It's not like prayed by super saints, prayed by TV evangelists, prayed by anointed, pray for one another and this one another's prayer will bring about the healing of the sick in Jesus' name. Amen. And God wants to heal you in Jesus' name. I want to encourage you that God will heal the sick. Now, interesting, people are willing to believe that God wants them to be a millionaire, but they find it difficult to believe God wants to heal their sick. Can you imagine that? They are willing to believe that God can give them anything if they ask. But they find it difficult to believe God can heal the sick. And that's basically what the greed of the world that has come and influence our mind. That God, can you imagine a God who wants you to be rich and die sick? That's not the God of the Bible. God wants you to have divine health, health and healing over your body. And let's hold on to the scriptures right now in Jesus' name. The first area that we saw, seven things, but now I just want to share with you five, but in this episode, we're going to talk about one. Number one, God has forgiven, He heals, and number three, He redeems our life. The Bible says in uh, Galatians 5, uh, 3.13, Christ redeemed us from the curse 
of the law by becoming a curse for us. So the redemption has been bought over by Jesus. And, and number four, look at the word. The Bible says he crowns you. In Ephesians 2, 3 says that he has raised us up. Sorry, in Ephesians 2, 6. He raised us up with him, seated us with him in the heavenly places. Isn't that an act of crowning? Because when you act, when you crown someone, you'll get them to sit on the throne. And that's what Jesus has done for us in the New Testament, that you and I are seated together in the heavenly places. And then here the Bible says, he satisfies us with good things. In Ephesians 1, 3, the Bible says, Blessed be the God of our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. Amen. For every spiritual blessings. And that is why this is the challenge. Every spiritual blessing that is given in Christ Jesus. Talking about the healing power of God, I want to bring your attention to Matthew chapter 8, verses 5 to 13. The Bible says, When Jesus has entered Capernaum, a centurion came forward to him, appealing to him. Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed at home, suffering terribly. And uh, he said to him, I will come and heal him. You know, in many passages of the Bible, when, when Jesus is talking, this is one of the very rare passage where he asks a question, Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed at home, suffering terribly, the centurion saying, and he, he has not said, can you please come yet? But Jesus quickly answers, I will come and heal him. I will come and heal him, not I will come and visit him, not I will come and see whether he will be healed. Uh, let's see whether he has faith. Uh, let's see whether he believes in me first. Uh, let's see whether he deserves to be healed. I will come and heal him. Look, look, look at the power that is transmitting from Jesus. When you call him, the first response of God always is, I will come and I will heal him. Today, if you will call upon the name of Jesus in your house, maybe you're lying down in bed, maybe you do not know how to pray long prayers, all that you got to say, God, I'm lying down here, helpless. Maybe I'm going through all the symptoms of all the challenges right now. Fear, what is going to happen, so on and so forth. You know what God will say? Jesus, he will say, I will come and I will heal you. The Bible says, but the centurion replied, Lord, I'm not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only say the word and my servant will be healed. He said, I'm not worthy. We say many times the same way. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. But you know what interesting, when I look at this passage, Jesus is not addressing this man Okay, sorry man, listen, you are worthy, you know, Let, let's give some counseling time for you. You are worthy after all, it's not like you are not worthy. He's not focusing on his mind, he's focusing so much on the person who has the need. Your mind can be in trouble, but your body has a need. Your spirit could be doubting, but your body has a need. Your mind may not be strong enough to know all the scriptures or you don't know how to pray seven hours praying and believing or fasting for 40 days, but your body has a need. Even though you may say, God, I'm not as holy as other people are, but I need your healing. God is willing to touch you and to heal you. He's saying, but the century Centurion replied, I'm not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only say the word and my servant will be healed. For I am a, too a man under authority with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he marveled and said to those who followed him, truly I tell you, no one in Israel uh, have I found such faith. And I tell you, many will come from the east and the west, recline at table with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, while the sons of the kingdom will be 
thrown into the outer darkness in that place there will be weeping and ganishing of teeth and the centurion Jesus said go let it be done for you as you have believed and the servant was healed at that very moment now let's take a break for a minute the point being the servant is not the one who asked for the healing it was the centurion the household man we don't have any clue whether the servant have faith have no faith whether he believed he did not believe the whole story is about the centurion there is no contact point Jesus did not even really go come and heal he didn't even go because all the centurion said you don't really have to come I have the faith enough that if you would open your mouth and say it, boom he will be healed because I know what authority is all about now you know what authority is all about as well you are not naive neither we you know uh, all that the uh, the president of a nation has to sign one bill and the whole nation have to do and that is authority when the father say the whole family is doing that is authority you are doing a lot of things because your boss says you did say something that you need to do and that is authority and the same way Jesus is saying I will come and heal you in Jesus name I will come and heal you and if you will come under the, the authority of what God said don't struggle with your faith regardless your faith is one or ten whatever it is at this moment don't struggle with your faith surrender it to Jesus and say God my faith is not going to heal me you are it is not based on how much I believe it is based on who you are it is based on your authority it is based on your willingness some parents are believing for their children's healing here the centurion was believing for the others healing and God looked at the faith of the centurion some are believing the faith healing for their husbands and for their wives recently we receive a call and said can you the wife call can my husband is sick at home would you come and pray ma'am if you are watching that this broadcast right now I just want to tell you the power of God will be able to come through this broadcast the Lord will be beside you right now to touch you and to bring that healing anything no weapon which form against you shall prosper and I want to encourage our fellow brothers our family in the name of Jesus no matter where you are maybe you don't have enough money to go to and see the doctors or maybe you are too afraid if you see the doctors you'll have a lot more bad news than what you think it is or maybe you are thinking that who can I say or share to or maybe you are going through a disease where you are just too embarrassed to tell someone or anyone I tell you what there is a God who's willing to hear there is a God of compassion who's willing to listen to you no matter what you have been through right now if you are down with sick sickness and disease right now the power of Jesus is available he will come <coughs> and touch you as we pray you may not have known Jesus at all maybe you're watching this broadcast can I invite you to know Jesus can I invite you like the centurion come under the authority of God make Jesus as the Lord and the Savior of your life come under his authority come under the blood covering and the power of Jesus will touch you and heal you right now we are talking about Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. So we are not going to forget any of his benefits. Are you ready? I'm going to pray for you. I know that the Holy Spirit will come upon you right now as we pray. No matter where you are, angels are waiting to dispatch the power of God into your body. All that I'm asking is that you will write to us and encourage us again. You will write and share the testimony to others that God is faithful Jesus can be trusted he is the same yesterday today and forever his power came once he will do it again he is no longer afraid of any other name there is no other name <coughs> above the name of Jesus every disease you can think about can I encourage you right now 
write down the challenge you are going through in your body on a piece of paper put it under your feet and step on top of it and say and declare you are under my feet in Jesus name you are under my feet in Jesus name you are under my feet in Jesus name or you could be at the bait of destruction the Bible says if God wants to raise you up he will do it in Jesus name hallelujah hallelujah not everybody is bound to death not everybody is bound to diseases some people are sick because they don't know there is a God who can heal them some people are sick because of their own doing some people are sick because of demons and so on the subject is just too vast don't get confused now it's just very simple you want to be healed believe in Jesus Let's pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for your brother. I pray for the sister. I pray for the family of Christ God. I pray for those who are listening to this broadcast. Father, in the name of Jesus, maybe those who are standing in proxy, believing that their loved one will be healed by the power of God. We pray, Lord, Lord, just as the vision that you showed me, before we started this recording, that God, that you will come and stand beside the bed, Touch them with love and compassion as a father and bring about the healing power over their body. So Father, we release the healing power of God over the persons who's believing for. We believe in Jesus' name, all the cancer, COVID, and you name it, the diseases, whatever is there which is not even discovered yet, in the name of Jesus, comes under the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, you showed me years ago many more contagious diseases which has not been named before, new diseases which has never existed before is going to be coming on upon the surface of this earth because of sin and because of disobedience and because of rebellion. But I want to thank you. But for your people who believe in your name, you have made the provision of the blood of Christ. You have made the provision of the redemption. You have given the benefits of redemption. And one of it is to be healed in Jesus' name. So Father, we pray, no matter how far they are, no matter what is the condition of their soul, no matter what is the condition of their faith, Touch them with your compassion. Touch them with your love. Touch them, O oh God. Give them a break in Jesus' name so they can praise you, so they can glorify your name. They can honor your name and they can share about the goodness of God to their family members. If God can heal one, God can heal many. So Father, today we pray in Jesus' name, a mass healing in Jesus' name. Let household healing become a very normal thing in Jesus' name, Father. And Father, we pray that the power of God over this broadcast will penetrate through the seven seas in Jesus' name and bring healing to those who are watching around the nations of the world. We thank you and we are going to receive the testimonies of praise of God's healing power for your glory. And I thank you, Father. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank the Lord. You know how powerful and how true God is when He becomes so real into our very own lives. And I'm so excited. I'm going to wait to listen to all your testimonies as you will write through our email that God is a God who heals, that God is a God who will touch people. Hallelujah. And He's going to touch you very soon. Write to us and you know once again, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. God bless you until I see you into the next broadcast.